All right, let's begin with prayer. Wonderful Father God, thank you so much. You're good. You're always good to us. And Father, you gave us everything we need. And if we forgot to give thanks to you, then we are sinners. At this time, let us repent that we committed all these things knowingly and unknowingly. And let us truly receive the cleansing, cleanse the heart, uh, pure heart through the word of God. And let us have also wisdom and courage like Joshua who entered the land of Canaan alive and those who led this conquering the land of Canaan. Please help us to conquer these evil forces of the darkness with the sword of the word of God. And when we do that, we believe that you will bless us greatly. And I pray that may you give these little children and young adults, those who try to keep the word of freedom to be history and spread it to the whole wide world, please raise them with faith and courage. We believe this, you will all hear our prayers and you will answer our prayers. And we believe this in the name of Jesus Christ in Thanksgiving. Amen. Okay, I hope you had a great, great week. And today we're going to study about crossing the Jordan River. This is quite an amazing story. And if you are ready, let's read our scripture reading. It's from Joshua chapter 3, 15 through 17. Joshua chapter 3, verses 15 through 17. Ready, go. The water of the Jordan was going over its banks. It always does that at the time the crops are being gathered. The priests came to the river. Their feet touched the water's edge. Right away, the water coming down the river stopped from flowing. It piled up far away at a town called Adam near Zerthan. The water flowing down to the Dead Sea was completely cut off. So the people went across the Jordan River opposite Zergo. In verse 17, the priests carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord. They stopped in the middle of the river and stood on dry ground. They stayed there until the whole nation of Israel had gone across on dry ground. And this is the word of God, and the children of God say, Amen. Right? All right. So like I said, today is about Joshua's story who led crossing the Jordan River. So look at this map. After the 40 years of the wilderness journey, the 41st campsite was this Plains of Moab, Plains of Moab. And now they're about to cross the Jordan River. And the final campsite was this 42nd campsite, Gilgal. But actually to camp, at Gilgar, which was the last place, you had to cross this river, Jordan River, right? It says Jordan River here. And how can you cross it? 
So this reminds us what happened in the Red Sea. At the Red Sea, when Moses stretched out his hand with the staff of God, and the Red Sea was parted. It was amazing if they crossed it on a dry ground. And now, we, we just read this Joshua chapter 3, and it says, all the people of Israel crossed on the dry ground as well, when they crossed the river Jordan. So how did they do that, right? The last obstacle, this is the last obstacle before entering Canaan. So you have to cross it if you want to finish this journey in the desert wilderness. Okay, so let's watch what happened. The Faithful Hall of Fame, Joshua. This is Joshua. Joshua was an Israelite who followed Moses through the wilderness. Joshua learned from Moses as Moses led the Israelites through the Red Sea. And as Moses taught the people about God's law. Oh, I see. Oh, listen up. One day, Moses was talking to the Israelites. He was reminding them of the law and all that God had done for them. Yeah. I'll see here, are you? When Moses had finished giving instructions to the people, he said, I am no longer able to lead you. Hold on. Do not be afraid, for God will neither fail you nor abandon you. Yeah. Then Moses called Joshua Me? and told him to be strong and courageous, for he would lead the Israelites into the promised land. Well, see? Then Moses died. Uh... To this day, no one knows exactly where he was buried. The people and all of Israel mourned. The people of Israel looked to Joshua to lead them, as Moses had told them. There he is. Yeah. God told Joshua to be strong and courageous, for he would be with Joshua wherever he went. He told him to remember what Moses had told him and to study the book of instruction. God told Joshua that it was time to lead the people of Israel across the Jordan River and into the Promised Land. Joshua was the leader of the Israelites, who God would use to take his people into the Promised Land. Yeah, let's do it! Joshua readied his people to cross the Jordan River, which was the only thing dividing the Israelites from the land that God had promised to them. All right. We're here. Okay. They camped beside the river for three days, waiting, just as the Lord had commanded them. At this time of year, the Jordan River was flooded and flowing with so much water that it was impossible to cross on foot. And then the Lord said, let there be water. Hey, priest. Yeah. Come on. God told Joshua to tell the people that the priests would carry the Ark of the Covenant and lead the people through the water. He told the priest to step into the rushing waters. Wait, huh? And when they would do this, the waters would stop flowing. Uh, all right. And as soon as the priest did this, the water of the Jordan River did stop flowing. Yeah. And the priest stood with the Ark of the Covenant on dry ground as the Israelites crossed to the other side. All right. God told Joshua to send 12 men from the 12 tribes of Israel to take 12 stones from the place that the priests were standing. When all this had been finished as God commanded, Joshua called the priests from the Jordan. We're good, come on. As their feet left the Jordan River, the waters came back into place, just as they had been. 
Wow! Yeah, 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 yeah. They brought their stones to their camp and set them as a memorial so future generations might remember the story of how God brought his people through the Jordan River on dry ground. Every time when I think about this story, this is just an amazing story, right? So let me see if you understood. What stood between the Israelites and their promised land? The name of the river was the Jordan River, Jordan. And what did Joshua tell the people to do? As the people of God, what they have to do? They have to follow the Ark of the Covenant. And then who carried this Ark of Covenant? The priests. Priests carry this Ark of the Covenant. So they will go first with the Ark of the Covenant, and you should follow them. That's what Joshua told the people. And what happened when the and the priests stepped into the Jordan River. Okay, wait, think about this. It was impossible to cross over the river. Sometimes you see the people who do the triathlon and then those are very good at swimming. Are you good at swimming? They can cross the river with swimming. Even they, they just swim and see. But during this time of a harvest, the water was so strong and this river was overflowing. So it was almost impossible to cross the river. And then remember they have these elders and all the senior citizens and the babies too. And everyone should cross the river safely. How would you do that? So by obeying God's word. But again, remember the story when they Cross the Red Sea. What they have to do is watch and wait. Then the water was parted and they crossed the Red Sea on dry ground. So they didn't have to risk anything. But what is the difference between Red Sea and crossing the Jordan River? You have to actually take your courage. You have to, as a priest, Step into the water first. Your feet must be wet first. That's scary. So even though you heard God promises you to keep, but actually when you step into the water, the priests, really, they needed a great faith. So even the size of faith is different. So sometimes you need the little faith, but now you need the great bigger faith and especially if you are the priest so when they actually stepped into the Jordan River what happened amazing the river stopped flowing flowing right that's amazing so think about that Joshua chapter 4 23 what does it say the Lord your God dried up the Jordan for you until you had gone across it. So as soon as the water stopped, the priest didn't move it and wait for the babies and all of these people to cross. He did to the Jordan River the same thing he had done to the Red Sea. He dried up the Red Sea ahead of us until we had gone across it. So they were so amazed, and now they built this orchard of stone with the 12 stones. Why 12? Remember, this nation of Israel, they have 12 tribes. 12 sons of Zika became the 12 tribes of Israel. So each stone will represent each tribe. So they have 12 stones. So what it means is that all the people, without missing anyone, you should remember God and what God has done for us. So today, hope you remember what God has done. 
this trying of the Red Sea, trying of the Jordan River, is what God has done. And he is doing this miracle for us even today right now. So let's think about the lessons we can learn from here. First, we have to think about Jesus and the royal high priest. Everything in the Bible is pointing to Jesus Christ and God's work. What's going to be done? It's working like a shadow or a symbol or a prophecy. And this letter, Joshua, is a picture of Jesus. And I want you to remember that this Hebrew word, Joshua, is actually means Jesus in Greek. Okay? So it's the same word, Savior, the one who will save you. And Romans chapter 15, 16. Who are the priests today? It's all of us. We learned about this made for purpose. Question. You are made for purpose to be his temple, his holy temple, and to be the priest, the priest of the gospel, the priest of the word of God. So today, you and I, we have the duty as a priest to preach God's goodness. And this first Peter chapter two verses nine tells us that we are royal priests. Let's read. But God chose you to be his people. You are royal priests, you're a holy nation, you're God's special treasure, and you're all of these things so that you can give him praise. God brought you out of darkness into his wonderful light, marvelous light. So remember. Jesus shows us, um, Joshua shows us Jesus. And we are the priests of God's gospel, good news. And we have to preach this good news as a priest. And have you ever faced an obstacle to getting something you wanted? You have to, and you want to get something. And there is an obstacle. And there's a barrier, there is a difficulties. And what do you have to do? Remember what they did. God told something and they obeyed it. So the power of overcoming this obstacle is keeping God's word. Keep God's word. Remember. We saw this from the video. God gave the Book of the Covenant to Joshua and have him studied and have the people studied and prayed. When you try to bring your friend to church, let's say, when you pray for your mom and dad, who are not Christian yet, but to be Christians, stand firm and stay where you are. Like the priest with the Ark of the Covenant were standing firm in the River Jordan, right? Until everyone across the Jordan River. Why were the priests carrying the Ark? Not afraid as they stepped into the raging Jordan River, this torrent river, because they were focused. They're focused on the promise of God. And God had said, you will have this land of Canaan and you're going into the promised land. God has promised and his promise will be never changing. So you can have confidence, God will make it happen. So even though there is a rain in water, the priests were not afraid. Have you ever done something that required you to have courage? To stand firm on the promises of God, you need this courage. Like a lion, you need wisdom to have a plan. But you 
still have courage to actually carry this out. You have to step into this war. Then it will surely stop. We have to believe and stand firm on the promises of God. So remember, when you try to bring your friend to church and praying for other people, stand firm and stay where you are. God said to Joshua, be strong and be courageous. I was extraordinary courageous because I will be with you, right? Impossible with God. 
and it is more so if God promised for you. And where can you find these promises for you? In the Bible. And by keeping the word of God, by reading the word of God, have confidence in you and stand firm on the promises of God. So there's no obstacle too big when we see the world through the eyes of faith because we live by faith, not by sight, okay? So I hope and pray that you leave a wonderful week by believing, standing firm on the promises of God, like Joshua and the priest. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for giving us this hope and encourage us to believe and to stand firm on the promises of God. Sometimes we are discouraged. Sometimes we are frustrated. Sometimes we worry. Sometimes we concern a lot. Father, when there is something blocking us to fulfill our wishes and your will, let us take courage like Joshua. By the help of the Lord, by the power of the word of God, and let us stand firm without moving by faith. And let us actually step into the water, spiritual Jordan, and have it dried by the power of God and wait for the people across. Everyone will be safe. And Father, let us give glory to God as the priests of the gospel. Remember each and every kids who are worshiping in the Lord today. And we pray this in the name of Jesus Christ with thanksgiving. Amen. All right. So if you have any questions, please send it to me and share with me. And I hope you have a great week. And we'll see you next Sunday. All right. For this and the live streaming from here and then I'll get some